Should Christians vote for Kamala Harris, Joe Biden's new VP pick? Before we get into that, don't forget to click subscribe, like and share, and that bell notification so that you can be reminded when we post new videos. Okay, so let's run down a few things about Kamala Harris. Now, just a little bit of background on her ethnicity because there's going to be a lot of talk about how she's the first, not just female, uh, well, let's back up a little bit. A lot of people aren't expecting uh, Joe Biden to make it through his first term, which means we are voting potentially for Kamala Harris as president. So she will not only be potentially the first female president, but many people are gonna say she's the first, going to be the first female black president. So not that it matters. I mean, I have no problem with, with whatever, if someone's black. But let's just be clear here. Her father is half Jamaican and half white. So she's one quarter Jamaican one quarter white. Her mother is all Indian, as in from India. So Kamala Harris is 50% Indian, 25% black, 25% white. So she's not African American because her father's from Jamaica. So she will be the first female, not just the first female president, the first female Indian president. I think if you're 50% of something and the other two are 25% and 25%, you're the 50%. Okay, so we are voting for the first female Indian president. Now, what's also interesting is because she, she had a, a Jamaican father and an Indian mother, she was exposed to two different religions. So. Her parents divorced when she was very young, so she would often be taken to one church or to another. So she was primarily raised a uh, black Baptist, but her mother, as most Indians, practices Hindu. So she was exposed to some Hinduism. But I think Kamala would say her belief system was is mostly in line with being black Baptist. Great, no problem there. Now, she is also, interestingly enough, married to a Jewish man. So she's been exposed somewhat to Judaism. No problem there. I don't have any problem with Jews. I don't have any problem with Indians. I don't have any problem with black people, whether they're from Africa or Jamaica. I really don't care. What matters is the fruits of how she's been raised. Personally, I would want a Christian in office over a Hindu. I would take a black Christian woman over Joe Biden any day. If you put Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice on a ticket in any order, I don't care who's running for president or VP, I would vote for them immediately. They would be my choice, okay? So race doesn't matter to me, but it's good that we get, that we get all the other stuff out of the way so that there's no confusion. Okay, now what we should be concerned with Kamala over is some of her stances on particular issues that don't always coincide with Christian's belief system. For instance, her voting record is 100% pro-choice, down the line. Okay, there's no, there appears to be no issue at no time rather has she ever voted or favored anything pro-life okay she even said when she was running for president as president she would block state level pro-life laws okay when do you remember when Planned Parenthood came under fire because they were secretly some of their employees were secretly recorded talking about the amount of money they should charge for baby parts well Colin Harris defended Planned Parenthood so we could almost stop right there that's almost game set and match because I don't know how you defend any organization for debating or bartering whatever you want to say the price of baby parts it seems pretty uh, evil to me but anyway if you need more convincing let's just continue 
All right, so there was a federal judge nominee. He, um, Kamala Harris hassled him during the hearing. Basically, this guy was a member of the Knights of Columbus, which is an all-male Catholic organization. And their leader apparently said some things against abortion. He essentially said abortion was responsible for 40 million innocent deaths since Roe v. Wade was passed. Now, technically, it's probably 50 plus million, but 40 million is catastrophic enough. She was very upset because she basically said to this federal judge nominee, hey, did you know that the leader of your organization made those comments and do you believe or do you agree with what he said? Fortunately, this guy passed on a vote of in the Senate of 51 to 40. She would not defend Prop 8, Proposition H in California, which defined marriage as between a man and a woman on the basis that it violated the Constitution. So many Christians believe that marriage is between a man and a woman as we believe it has been defined in the Bible. So Kamala Harris doesn't agree with this. Here's yet another instance where her belief system doesn't quite fall in line with ours. Now lastly, and this isn't necessarily a Christian issue, but a lot of Christians often weigh in on this, is allowing trans athletes to compete in the sport with which they identify. So typically you don't see women who identify as men competing in male sports. What you see are men who identify as women competing in female sports. Now, this is problematic because of men's body types. Despite that the estrogen that they're taking to you know, make transition to womanhood, they are still built differently. So, here's a great example. Allison Felix is a U.S. sprinter, world class. She's won multiple world championships. Her best time in the 400 meter, 400 meter is one lap around the track, one lap that circles the football field. Her best time is 49.26 seconds. Anything under a minute is fast. I certainly can't run 400 meter under a minute. That's blazing. However, in 2018, there were 275 high school boys who ran faster than her time on 783 occasions. Now she's an Olympic level female athlete and you have 275 boys in high school that broke her record at least 780 times. Now, you take one of those boys who says, I want to be a girl now. He's competing at the high school level. He is going to destroy all the other girls on the track. Obliterate them. Is that fair? No, it's not fair at all. This is why most agree with keeping the two sports separate and you compete in a sport according to the biology that you were assigned at birth. I hope I said that clearly and eloquently enough. Now, to Kamala's, uh, to Kamala Harris's favor, she is married to a Jewish man, so it would look, it would be a little awkward if she didn't at least support Israel, okay? So she has come out as a pro-Israel supporter. She supports IPAC, which is the largest pro-Israel uh, lobby, so that's good. She also doesn't support placing conditions on aid to Israel in order to basically coerce their policy, in order to shape. She doesn't believe in trying to shape or force their policy by placing conditions on the aid that we provide Israel. So, score one for Kamala, that's great. However, she does support rejoining the Iran nuclear program which provides aid to a country provides aid to a country that wants to 
obliterate Israel. Just wants to wipe them off the face of the earth. So, score one against Kamala. Okay, because that's pretty bad. So, what do you think? As Christians, should we support Kamala Harris? Whether you're a man or a woman, is it more important to support her because she could potentially be our first female president? Or should we not side with her because some of her views on abortion? If you're a Christian, where do your allegiances lie? Do you side against her because of her somewhat anti-Christian beliefs? Or do you side with her because she has a chance of making history? Do you side with her because she is pro-Israel? Or do you side against her because she's somewhat pro-Iran and Iran is hugely anti-Israel? I would enjoy hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Look, I think it would be fantastic to have our first female president. We all know that Joe Biden, I think he's 77 or potentially turning 78. He's misfired a couple times in some discussions. Perhaps there's some cognitive decline. Let's just pray for him on that, okay? Let's pray for his family. I, I don't care if he's not of the party that I, I, I'm, I'm presently in line with, but I, I see no reason why we can't wish him the best and pray for him. But four years at president is a long haul. I mean, that puts even people in great shape, puts a great amount of stress on them. So can he, can he make it four years as president? It's very unlikely. Most, most people in the polls don't believe he'll make it four years. And we are voting now for Kamala. If Trump doesn't win, Kamala is going to be president. The first female Indian president. That's who you're voting for. You're voting for somebody who is 100% pro-choice, who possibly could jeopardize Israel's security. I don't know, a lot can happen, but that's for you to decide. I just want to put those facts out there so you had a better understanding of who you will be pulling the lever for come November. Thank you guys. Just remember to click like, subscribe, and share. I love your comments. Please leave them below. I love you. Have a blessed week.